he doesn't have that capability. He is just blabbing. But I will allow the security forces that are responsible for handling such cases to take up the matter. Ours is come on the battlefield and we take you out. You should come on the battlefield. Now to comments by some individual that they can shoot down the helicopter of the military. I think that's laughable. In fact, I'm about to laugh about that. And I say that because while I did this country, no be small. When I remember last week when they do local government election for River State, where helicopter come fly, come they fly around uh, River State. Now I'm aside of work, aside of work, come come and come talk say, whoa, minute when I send helicopter for us, I'll bring it down, I'll bring it down. I have the power to bring it down. I have what it takes to bring it down. When the helicopter is shot down, let nobody blame them. I didn't go and look for the helicopter to shoot them down. I will shoot down the helicopter. I will shoot down the helicopter. I swear by Allah that I will shoot down the helicopter. So as I started to talk about that in Finnish, nine minutes they can't reply him. Come talk say, Oga, even though say no be all send that helicopter, but you don't have any power to bring any military helicopter down. You don't have the power. But if you think you have the power, come to the battlefield. They challenge the Asari Dokobo, say, make a combat field. Him and his men, if you think that he has power. <laughs> you know that sometimes that they talk and say, maybe just find a way to put this content for Netflix. Make with the watch and they laugh away, laugh away our sorrows. Hmm? So please, you can imagine where military, they reply one man, say, you know, fit, make a combat field. One man, Asari Dokobo, who be Asari Dokobo? Eh? Where military, Nigerian military, go they reply? Anyway, we can allow you to watch the video. Hmm? As you watch the video, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notification button so you get notified anytime I upload a video, okay? I tell you that he doesn't have that capability. He's just blabbing. But I will allow the security forces that are responsible for handling such cases to take up the matter. Ours is come on the battlefield and we take you out. He should come on the battlefield and see whether we can react or not. Now to comments about welfare. I must tell you at this point that when you look at the, higher, the, the high command of the military, beginning with the Chief of Defense Staff, General C.G. Musa, to the service chiefs, one thing you will, the, the common denominator you will see or find is that all of them have operational experience, they've been in the battlefield, they know what the troops in the field are feeling. And that is why on their appointment to their positions, they knew to take welfare of the troops as priority, which they have done. I can assure you that the military doesn't play with the welfare of his troops particularly at this time. For the army, the Air Force, I'm sure you've heard of welfare flights. Several things have been done, which I cannot reel all of them out right now. But I just want to assure you that the military high command does not play with the issue of welfare. I know where you are going to with that question when you spoke about welfare. And it is the case of a brigadier, a brigadier general that was relieved of his command based on issues surrounding welfare and other mistakes. The military is a professional force which is self-regulating. I wish I could say much more about that situation, but I cannot. And the reason is because that case is going to go before a court martial. And by the time I put words forward here now, we will be accused of certain things. And we must note that they say you are innocent until what? Proving guilty. As you are aware, we have taken off the battlefield 
several of the terrorist commanders, their, their combatants, their operatives, and their foot soldiers. And we will continue to do this day in, day out. Now, the motivations of the terrorists have been low, low and lower and getting lower every passing day. And this, this is indicative of the surrendering that we've recorded in the Northeast. And as I speak, surrendering is going on on an incremental measure every, every passing day. Now to the issue of some of the terrorists that have surrendered, escaping back to the bush. You will know by now that the military is not responsible for the DDR program, which is ongoing with their surrendering in the Northeast. Having said that, that they have gone back to the bush is an ugly and disappointing development. However, it requires all hands on deck to make sure that the DDR process is online, is on stream, and producing the desired result that it is intended to produce. That is the much that I can say about that for now. For us, the enemy we fight is the terrorist. Some may choose to call them different names in the different theaters of operations where they exist. In the Northwest, in the Northeast, some will say terrorists, and in the Northwest, some, some people will want to say bandits. I tell you that they are all terrorists because we should call them for what they are. In the North Central Zone, we want to tell you that they are headers. We should call them for what they are. They are all terrorists, and that is what we see. Now, troops are making significant progress. Like I said, we prioritized taking out the terrorist leadership, and we've been doing just that. In the last three quarters, we've taken out over 300 terrorist commanders not mentioning even their foot soldiers and the aim of this is to diminish their fighting capabilities and to damage their military capabilities which we have been doing even as indicated in the brief that you have just received you can see how many weapons ammunition that we recovered you can see how many terrorists that we have decimated now to the question of what we are doing in the Northwest. In the Northwest, I would say that because of the operational flexibility that we have, we can see while reassessing our operations where there are gaps. And that has informed us to create a unified command structure such that the such that will give us the kind of results that we want to see. When you look at the North East setup and you look at what we had in the Northwest, it wasn't the same. So based on the kind of successes that we recorded in the Northeast, we found the need to rejig the operation in the Northwest in order for us to achieve even better successes than we have achieved in the Northeast. Hence, the operation was rejected and renamed as Operation Pansanyama. Already, with the rejigging of that operation, we are seeing results, even as more and more terrorist leaders and commanders are being decimated on the battlefield. I must say this, that every encounter that we have with the terrorists on the battlefield leaves more terrorists dead and several wanting to surrender. That is the situation. With Operation Fansa Nyama, 
which is just on the at, at the teaching stage we are already seeing the results and part of the results that we are seeing is that the terrorists are indicating that they want to surrender they are indicating that they want to surrender and recall that I said that all these terrorist commanders that we hear about Bill Utuji or whatever name they call themselves they are all dead men walking you can be sure of that now to the southeast where we have Operation Udoka the troops of Operation Udoka made significant achievements during their operations this week for instance the air component of Operation Udoka conducted air interdiction on indigenous people of Biafra and their eastern security network cohorts camps at Moda Valley you will recall that the Moda Valley spans from Osu to Iheala, local government areas of Imo and Anambra states. Several camps of the terrorist groups within the Moda Valley was destroyed with the terrorists decimated. Battle damage assessment revealed that several terrorists were neutralized and their structures destroyed, including their logistic dumps. Overall, the troops of Operation Udoka neutralized nine terrorists, arrested 21 of them, and rescued 14 kidnapped hostages during the course of operations this week. The troops also recovered nine AK-47 rifles, 162 rounds, of 7.62 millimeter special ammunition and over 70 rounds of 50 millimeter ammo ammunition among others now all the recovered items the arrested persons and the rescued hostages were handed over to the relevant authority for further action including prosecution in summarizing i will say that our role in the ongoing war is very clear and we are increasingly making progress. Nevertheless, we are not oblivious of some security challenges faced by citizens in certain quarters. We also recognize the urgency for an immediate turnaround of such ugly situations wherever they exist. Accordingly, we are reassessing and making necessary adjustments. So what do you think about this video? <laughs> Anyways, do you think that they are writing by replying this man that it's not evil, that should come to battlefield? Anyways, I know there's a battlefield somewhere in the east where they are battling it. I don't know what is happening there. <laughs> then they are also challenging Asari Dokubo to come out. Anyway, drop your comment on the comment section. All right. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. It's very important. All right. So thank you and God bless you.